Good day students, welcome to Basic Science class. Today we'll be talking about renewable and non-renewable energy. Uh, before I go ahead, I'd like to remind you of our normal procedure, being at the right place, free of noises and distraction. As well, you must have your um, notebook, your textbook, as well as your pen. My name is Ms. Oyelami. So over to our objective for the day. These are the objectives that at the end of this class, we must be able to understand the meaning of renewable energy. Um, secondly, we must know the meaning of non-renewable energy. The third one is that we must know the examples for each of them, examples for renewable and non-renewable energy, for the two sources of energy. Then the other one is that we must state the implication of the misuse of energy. The final thing we must note is that we must know what effect this energy has on um, society. So many of renewable energy. Renewable energy is the energy that is obtained from sources that cannot be exhausted. These sources can be replaced. So if you look at it, you said something that is, cannot be exhausted that means you can't run out of it it can never finish okay so these sources when you look at them they are relatively cheap okay they do not cause pollution those are the things you must note about the renewable energy so and they are often readily available so examples that we are going to look at under this um, source of energy is biomass. When we talk of biomass, we are talking of um, uh, a kind of energy that can be obtained from plants and animals. So biomass is made from crops, wood, leaves, and animal manure. Animal manure, those are the waste of animals, okay? maybe animal droppings and all that so it is a fuel but can be converted to other form of energy renewable because plants can grow over and over again okay as long as there's earth there's rain there's sunshine you must see plants growing and so far plants can grow definitely you must have this kind of energy same thing with animal, you know, biomass is made up of plants and animal um, waste or droppings. So definitely we can never run out of this source of energy. So the second one we are going to be looking at is um, town solid waste and garbage. Town solid waste and garbage. In a nutshell, you can call it refuse, okay? All the waste we use in the whole town so collective waste like food scrapings trash leaves etc if burnt produces energy in form of steam the steam produces its energy and this generates electricity so what that means is that whenever these um, wastes which are the refuse are being collectively um, put together in a place and burnt. Okay, there's a source of energy that is produced in form of steam, and this steam produces its energy, and this its energy can as well be used in generating electricity. And when garbage is left to rot or decompose, another fuel can call biogas is released okay under these um wastes you can have two sorts of um energy the first one is uh the heat that could produce from the steam of the burnt refuse 
which can be used in producing or generating electricity. The second one is that the garbage, the refuse, if you leave them without burning them, you allow them to decompose. That means they, they go bad, they rot, and you know, there are some animals like earthworm and all that in the soil that work on them. So they decompose. And during that decomposition, another fuel called biogas is released. So from our waste, we can see two important um, source of, sources of energy there. So the third one is biodiesel. This, uh, sorry about that. So this is a renewable energy made from vegetable um, fats and greases. Okay, when we talk of vegetable um, oil, we are talking of oil gotten from plants generally. For instance, if you take up soya beans oil and fat from animal, which, which is being mixed together with um, alcohol, it forms what we call biodiesel. Okay, so we'll follow that up by the next one, which is water. Water is another example of um, re renewable source of energy. You know, we can never run out of water. When water is used for washing and cooking, it is poured away and it enters the water cycle. Okay, these are the processes that you can have underwater cycle. You know, when you use water, you pour it away. The sun dries it up from the ground where you pour it. And what happened again is that it's collected as cloud. Okay, the first one is that the sun dries it up. The second one is that it's, it collects as cloud. Okay, and the last step is that it will come back as rain. So whenever you use water and pour it, fine. You don't know how the circle works, but that's what's really happened. So likewise, hydroelectric power is produced by turning of turbine by water falling from dams, e.g. just like we have in our Kanji dams where um, our electricity is being generated. Okay, that's another source. So the fifth one is um, geothermal. Geothermal has to do with um, um, the heat generated within the earth. For instance, maybe we have rock at the center of the earth. They do generate heat, great heat of very high temperature. So this heat can be converted to electricity. So that's for geothermal. So we we'll move to um, meaning of non-renewable energy. When you talk about non-renewable energy, is a, is a kind of energy that cannot be replaced once it has been used up. It can never be replaced once it has been used up. So note that. And the next one is that this type of energy source cannot be replaced within a human life cycle because it has set, it has taken several hundreds of years to be formed and is obtained from sources that can be exhausted. Note that, you know, when we talk about um, renewable energy, we talked about um, is this, that it's kind of energy that can never go um, we can never run out of it. That is, it can never be exhausted. But in this case, it's a form of energy that can be exhausted. You can finish it if you carelessly use it or we don't use it with, um, with, um, care. You just find out that we run out of it. So, harm is done to man mankind usually through environmental pollution caused by use of non-renewable energy. So oftentimes, um, non-renewable energy causes um, what we call environmental pollution. That means there will be pollution within the environment due to 
um, the process by which they are being obtained. So talking of an um, example of non-renewable energy, the first one on my list here is called coal. Coal. Coal is a black hard substance and is the oldest fuel known. Okay, United States of America uses coal to generate electricity. And one thing you have to note about coal is that it causes um, great pollution as it contains elements like carbon, oxygen, nitrogen, and sulfur. And this um, kind of element, when they combine with oxygen, they form some kind of chemicals that are not pleasant to the body system. So the second one on the list is um, crude oil, crude oil or petroleum, you can call it petroleum too. So it is a thick black substance found in the oil deposits located deep under the earth's surface. It can be split or refined into various other products by a process called fractional distillation. Okay, so there are lots of um, products inside this raw, is a raw substance. So when it's being purified or when it's being uh, refined, you see different kind of uh, products being generated out of it by this method. So these are some of the examples that of the products you can see in crude oil. We have the petrol, which we know as our normal fuel that we use for car generator and all that. Then we, the second one is diesel. We have lubricating oil too. Okay. We have lubricating oil. At times we have kerosene. We have, um, we have, um, a lot. Like the one we use for our cooking, the gas too, is one of the products of uh, petroleum. So, and as petroleum is, there's no waste. Uh, products, even the waste, the so-called waste, which is bitumen, is used for filling up our road when our road got spot. Okay, so the third one is um, natural gas. Natural gas is another fuel found on the ground. So how can you recognize natural gas? It's odorless and cannot be seen with the naked eyes. Okay, lighter than Air. that means they are very light a gas called methane is the chief constituent of natural gas when you say something is chief constituent that means that's what made them hope those are the important components things that you can find inside um, natural gas okay which is methane there's a gas called methane is the chief constituent of natural gas then is highly flammable that means it can easily catch what fire it catches fire easily and the last one is that uh, is the cleanest of all the fossil fuel okay so the example four is we categorize that as other non-renewable source of energy other distillates from petroleum like um, diesel, kerosene, aviation fuel. Aviation fuel is gotten from the um, from the petroleum. is one of the petroleum products too. Okay. Likewise, bitumen. Okay. All these ones, they are numerous. Okay. None of them is a waste when you talk of um, petroleum products. And they are all fuel and lubricants that can be exhausted. If we keep on using them without finding another source to, to manage them up, if we keep, if we use and use and use without using, maybe we don't have another option. We just see that one day we wake up and petroleum is gone. So that's what we mean by if it's been exhausted, you can never um, generate them back, okay? Because it took like hundreds of years before they can be formed. So the fifth one is mineral resources. Under mineral resources, we talk about different, you know, each state has different um, resources. 
is the natural endowed um, resources given by to us by God. You know, in some states they have salt, in some states they have granite, in some states they have um they have what's it called coal, gold, anything you can think of. You know, all these things are being naturally given to us. At times you dig the soil and you find so so much gold that you can refine and make money from and all that. So this kind of thing is um is classified as non renewable um sources. Okay, same thing with uh, the sixth one, which is soil. You know, as it is, our soil to can be non renewable because a time will come when we keep using carrying and using them for building and all sorts. We might run out of it one day. So these are the pictorial representation of um renewable and non renewable. Okay, under rene renewable, can you see? Solar energy is part of renewable, is always available, it's not going anywhere. Same thing, hydropower energy. Okay, we have um, geothermal, it's great, it's generated from the um, rock within the earth. We have the wind energy, we have the biomass from which is taken from plants and animals. Same thing, we have wave energy, we have tinder energy, we have a lot of them here. And under non-renewable energy, we have um, the fossil fuel, we have the coal, we have the nuclear energy, we have natural gas. So this will give you a clue of things that you can see under um, renewable and non-renewable energy. Just like we have here, we have here. Under natural resources splitted into two, we have renewable resources and non-renewable resources. Under re renewable resources, we have plants, we have animals. That's, those are the main key, uh, two main key uh, things that help us in, in renewable resources. Same thing with uh, non-renewable, we talk about the mineral resources, we talk about fossil fuel, we talk about soil and a lot more you know this small you don't have to see everything here just like a representation of how it looks like so we'll move to implications of the misuse of petroleum products you know as we have our petroleum product there are, there are ways we use them that are not acceptable so when we use them in those kind of ways you call them there's always repercussion or a kind of negative effect it has on us those are the implications okay the first one on my list is that lives lost during fuel scarcity because people were forced to store petroleum products in their homes which which results in fire outbreak you know many a times when fuel are on the high side People, or maybe they are hearing that, okay, there will be increase in price of fuel tomorrow. So people will tend to buy more than they needed. And they will now keep them inside their homes. And those kind of um, experience is always a terrible and horrible one. Because in the process, there could be fire outbreak and lots of lives. We see in our news in the time past, we see a lot of family being destroyed and due to these um, single hearts. Okay, the second one is um, f vandalization of oil pipe has led to explosion and loss of innocent life. Vandalization, what do you understand by vandalization? When you talk of vandalization, you are talking of willful damage. When people just intentionally want to damage something, okay? They, they, they damage the oil pipe, maybe in order to get some oil or fuel out of the place. And at the long run, they won't be able to do it the way it was uh, being met initially. So explosion begins to happen because as the fuel is being or the petroleum product is being um gushing as they are is gushing out you see that a little fire or little heat can cause 
um, fire break. And you might be the one or anybody might be walking along that path in that very, t at that very moment. So the person might cut up with the fire. So innocent lives are being lost in that kind of, um, singular art. So the third one on my list is called price of petroleum products, price of petroleum product keep increasing because alternative sources of energy are still limited okay just like he, we talk about um demand and supply when they see that people are coming for these products more and more even when there's nothing people tends to increase their prices because they might think maybe things are going to get um expensive or is is going out of sight for a while so they will be increasing the price because they are so shocked that a lot of people are coming to buy and buy and buy every day so they tend to increase their price that's the meaning of that third one and the next one on my list is that the oil and gas wasted in generating electric power could be reserved and conserved for manufacturing essential chemicals like pesticides. Pesticides are the ones we use in our, in killing pests on our farm. And also pharmaceutical or as they will no longer be available. So what this um, point is trying to prove to us that the oil and gas being wasted during that electricity generation can be used somewhere else. We can use another option like coal or we use another source of energy. So we can always keep that one for manufacturing other things. Okay, so we look at the effect of energy on society. What are the effects? The first one is a good supply of energy makes life more comfortable. That's it. That's if there's good source of energy. But in other way, if there's no good source of energy, life will be what? Very miserable. Okay, for instance, when you don't have uh, much um energy source maybe either solar power or electricity or anything to power on or what you want to do you find out that everything becomes so boring and so irritating for you then the second one is that irregular power supply has reduced business flow okay the rate at which people do business is being limited because this epileptic uh, power supply we have these days Okay, the third one is uh, many, many industries cannot afford to preserve their goods using generator owing to the fact that they keep on burning fuel all the time. So, and they realize that they are, they spend more on the um, processing of the products more than they can really achieve from the profits. So you see some industry when they can't afford to close down their business. So they consequently forced out of the business, which could lead to economic wastes. So that's another one. The fourth one is that access to information on television, radio, internet. When there's no electricity, you can't do that. So these are the effects. Effects of uh, when there's no uh, energy. The fifth one is there is a high risk of unemployment because goods are not sold then employer may have to lay off his staff if salary cannot be paid okay for an employer that is not making profit or making much money so it's you look at it that okay it's better i lay off some staff so there won't be there won't be issue of no payments of salary so this leads to high risk of unemployment so with all this i'm so sure you understand and you're on the same page with me that these are the reasons why we have renewable as well as non-renewable energy sources so stay safe and enjoy your day